Watch out, watch out, let me get a shot. Where they at? Where they at? There were a number of journalists embedded with the U.S. Marines as they embarked on the battle for Fallujah in November of last year. One of those reporters was Kevin Seitz from the American network NBC. This morning, the Marines see you coming into the city unopposed. Kevin has spent nearly 10 months as an embedded journalist in Iraq. But he'd never before captured anything like this. Yeah, he's breathing. He's faking, he's fucking dead. Yeah, he's I had a pit in my stomach. I didn't feel like this was great footage. I, I, knew, I knew exactly what it was. Uh, it was something that, that has been captured on, on camera very few times in war. Reports of a Marine shooting an unarmed wounded combatant quickly flashed around the world. Exclusive first-hand account of what happened inside that mosque. At the time, most Western audiences didn't even get to see the shooting. For instance, NBC only showed this black and white still. But with Kevin's raw footage and his eyewitness account, Dateline can now reveal the full story behind the incident. It had all begun the day before the shooting. Kevin had been at that same mosque with a unit of the 3rd Battalion, 1st Marine Division. As the US troops fought their way into the mosque on that Friday, they had killed 10 out of 15 suspected insurgents. Yeah, we gotta fucking put two in each bag. Five wounded men remained. They were disarmed and treated by marine medics. Their wounds didn't seem to be life-threatening. They were serious, but not life-threatening. And I asked the lieutenant colonel, what will be done with these men? Will they be evacuated? And he said, yes, they will. So we left that mosque. The men were still alive. Apparently, they were left unguarded, but without weapons or anything. And the Marines advanced forward, moving south from the city. The next morning, on the Saturday, Kevin and the Marines returned to that mosque after reports of fresh fire from the area. When Kevin was still outside the mosque, he heard shooting. Yeah, they're on the far, far right, far right. Coming around the back. We heard gunshots outside the mosque before we went in. And to my ear, you know, I'm pretty familiar with what an M16 sounds like. They were single M16 gunshots, and there were three of them. It sounded like someone was being fired upon uh, and then moving over, firing again, and then firing again. Kevin overheard the following exchange between the platoon commander and his troops before they went inside. You shoot him? Yeah. He comes up to the squad that had been inside the mosque and he says, are there people inside there? And, and the Marine that had been inside holds up five fingers, signaling five people inside. Then the lieutenant asks, did you shoot them? And the Marine says, roger that, sir. And then the lieutenant asks, were they armed? And the Marine just shrugs his shoulders. These are the wounded that they never picked up. When I walked into that room, I, I immediately knew that these men that had just been shot again were the same wounded insurgents from Friday from the day before. So apart from the shooting Kevin captured on camera, he believes these other unarmed wounded men were also shot that day. This was largely ignored by the media at the time. Uh, we, we look at the evidence that these men were definitely shot again, freshly shot. Um, after ha having been wounded the day before. And then one is actually killed point blank in front of my camera. After capturing that image, Kevin discovers that this man is still alive. What happened? No, I know, I know. So what happened? I know. 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 I
انا والمجموعه كلها انطيتكم معلومات بليز سبيك عربي على مودي I want to give you information. The fate of this witness is unknown. I felt at that moment, I wish I hadn't been there. I wish I hadn't been in that spot at that time, just because I knew the responsibility that I would have at that moment on. The important part of this mission is... Having been embedded with one particular Marine unit for six weeks, Kevin had become very close to the men, but things changed dramatically after the shooting. It was a really dark time. I had time after this incident where I was moved to, uh, to the rear from the front lines. I had to leave my unit. But the reaction from back home was much worse. Kevin came under personal attack from the American public. I spent my days uh, pouring over thousands of hate mails and death threats every day. Uh, they were calling me a traitor, liberal media scumbag, hope that the next piece of video we see out of Iraq is your severed head on your back, hope some Marine frags you over there, hope the insurgents kill you, um, everything that you can possibly imagine. I'll be honest with you, there were times where I, I really felt like I wanted to destroy that tape and not release it uh, to the public. The controversy over Kevin's footage has fed into a growing debate about how the American media reports home from the war in Iraq. Kevin is showing these final year journalism students the difference between the raw footage he shot and the report that was actually put to air. You probably have never seen this because I don't think it's even aired on American television, the full shooting. With the war such a hot political issue, the American media has become very reluctant to criticize the actions of American soldiers. Just minutes after the four -star general... So even before Kevin received the hate mails, he and NBC knew the delicate tightrope they would have to tread. In the NBC report, Kevin went to great lengths to explain why the Marine might have pulled the trigger. These U.S. Marines have had to fight for nearly every inch of ground taken in Fallujah. They've inflicted heavy casualties on insurgents here, but have also suffered many of their own, some from a new and harrowing tactic, booby-trapping dead bodies to explode when Marines come near. We were diluting it every step of the way. A lot of the mitigating circumstances, we had to say over and over again, you know, you got shot in the face, um, they booby-trapped bodies. In fact, we didn't start with the shooting at all. We talked about X, Y, and Z and backed into it. At the same time, just a block away, one Marine was killed and five wounded by the booby-trapped body of a dead insurgent. So as dangerous as Iraq is, could the shooting be self-defense? And you know, that was a, a conscious effort, um, basically because we felt like we were going to take such fire on the story. Some people might think that you defended the Marine too much in your report. I think that uh, people could make that argument. They could say that uh, the mitigating circumstances were um, were presented in such a strong, forthright way that perhaps, you know, the incident that happened uh, didn't get proper play. The Marine squad has already been in here and shot the wounded men again. In the middle of all this media management and political controversy, the real debate appears to have been lost. Do you think that because of a paranoia to tell both sides of the stories and to explain everything and to make sure you're not accused of being biased, do you think that you can sometimes lose the truth? I think that the truth can become muddied in that process. I think that it, I think it can become fairly foggy. Despite evidence of what appears to be a war crime, the tape hasn't provoked a much greater soul-searching about acceptable rules of engagement for the U.S. military. Are these the kind of rules of engagement we use? And if so, we should be very open about it. Are we willing to live with the fact that they may do the same thing to U.S. soldiers and U.S. Marines? And potentially, that kind of, those kind of rules of engagement, will they lead to other repercussions for us in society? Will they create more terrorist acts because people feel that we're behaving uh, unnecessarily violent or barbaric, you know, in, in war.